Hello everyone, this is Yours Trivia, and today I'm going to teach you all how to properly pronounce Three Kingdom character names in Mandarin Chinese. Now for us to do this properly, we must first learn the basic concept of pinyin, which comes from the characters pin, which means to spell, and yin, which means sound. So together, pinyin means to spell out the sound, and therefore it is the Chinese phonetic alphabet. And while this alphabet also utilizes the Latin alphabet letters, the sound each letter makes are different from what you might expect from your native language, just like how the same letter E will make different sounds in English, German, or French. And before we continue, just to be clear, pinyin is not Chinese. It is merely a phonetic representation of the sounds that Chinese characters make utilizing the Latin alphabet. It is a great tool in aiding the process of learning Chinese and essential for typing out Chinese on a standardized keyboard. Therefore, since I'm here to help you learn how to properly pronounce Chinese characters, I need to first teach you pinyin. And just like the Chinese language itself, it is not easy. So if you're not interested in a lesson in Chinese and just want to hear how all the character names from Three Kingdoms are pronounced, Feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps to the second half of this video. For the rest of you brave souls, buckle up as I'm going to speed run you through the first year of kindergarten. Now, like English, the pinyin alphabet is subdivided into two main parts. First, we have the initials, which are similar to consonant sounds. Then you have finals, which are vowel sounds. And when you put the two together, you form the sound of any given Chinese character. And if we use the words pinyin as example here, you can see how each character is subdivided between an initial and a final sound. So in order to master pinyin, you must know how each initial and each final sound like, so you can combine them accordingly to speak Chinese. And in total, there are 21 initials, and they sound like this. Po, po, mo, po, de, te, ne, le, ge, ke, he, ji, ti, si, zhi, chi, shi, ri, zi, ci, si. Then there are also two pseudo initials called former initials represented by the letter Y and W and they sound like E and U. And following the initials we have finals and there are a couple different types of finals as well. First we have the simple finals which are one letter long and they contain the same vowels as the English language with the addition of the umlaut U and they sound like ah. Uh, O, U, E, U, U. Then, if you have multiple vowels in combination, you have what is called a compound final, and they sound like this: I, A, Ow, O, Ya, Ye, Wa, Wo. Yue, Yao, Yo, Y, Wei. But please note that I O U and U E I are often shortened to I U and U I in practice. Then, if a vowel or a combination of vowels are combined with the N or N G sound, it is called a nasal final, and they sound like this: An, N, Ying. Yun, Yan, Yuan, Wan, Wen, Ang, Ng, Wong, Ying, Yang, Yung, Wang, Wong. And just like the first group, U E N is often shorter to U N in practice. Lastly, we have one special final spelled er that sounds like er, and it is special because it cannot be preceded by initial. 
So it is a standalone sound and represents a character by itself. And thankfully, that is all the initials and final sounds in the Chinese language. And using a combination of one initial and one final, or simply just one final sound, you have the entire Chinese language, with the minor exception of tones. As each of these final sounds that we have just covered, total of 36, actually have four official tones, symbolized by the accent marker shown here. So, we take a simple sound using the letter A, which is our final sound of A, ah, which really is the representation of its first tone. There are three more variations of this, and they are A, ah, A, ah, A, ah, A. Ah. And while this might seem difficult, it is actually quite easy to grasp with the accent marker shown. As the first tone, which is represented by a flat line, is a very flat sounding A, which is just A. Ah. Then the second tone, which is a rising accent marker, is a rising tone, which is A, A, A. So you can hear the difference there. Then the third tone is an inflection tone. So it sounds like A, ah, which sounds like a dip, then a rise, just like the accent marker. Then finally, the fourth tone is a descending marker, which is A, ah, and that's a fourth tone of the same character here. Now, technically, there's also a fifth tone, which is called a soft tone, which has no accent markers. But since it's really complex enough, and soft tones are really only used in special situations, like at the end of a question, we can safely ignore it for the purpose of our discussion here. And that's going to wrap it up for our quick rundown of the concept of pinyin. And now we can apply it to properly pronounce Three Kingdom character names. So the first thing we're going to need is to apply the accent markers to each of the character names in Three Kingdoms, because without them, you really don't know how exactly they will sound, as the English representation of many of these Chinese names simply use the pinyin version without any accent markers. So that's why names like Cao Cao is often mispronounced. Because at first glance, if you look at this name in English, it sounds like he has two characters that should sound exactly the same. But once you apply the accent markers, you can notice here that this sound composed of the C sound, which is C, and AO, which is O, are actually presented in two different tones in his name, where the first character is in the second tone, or the ascending tone, and the second character is actually in the first tone, which is the flat tone. So, for example, his first character, or his last name, family name, which is Cao, is Cao, Cao. The Ao has the second tone, which is ascending. So, Cao, Cao. The second character is a much flatter sound because it's in the first tone. So, we have Cao, Cao. So, for the first character, we have Cao. Cao. So the ao is becoming the second tone, which is ao. Now ao is the first tone. You often use the first tone to represent the sound of the final by default, and that happens to be how the second character is pronounced. So cao, cao. So it's a ascending tone and then a flat tone. So that's why his name sounds slightly different between his first character and the second character. Now, please don't be overwhelmed. You can't possibly master pinyin through one quick YouTube video. It will take a lot of practice to learn just to memorize how each initial and final sound sound like, and then you have to take practice to put things together, and then you have to acquire the year to kind of learn how to identify each tone. Now, for the rest of the video, please simply enjoy my pronunciation of the entire roster of the unique characters in Total War Three Kingdom as of patch 1.7.0 in alphabetic order, starting with Cao Cao, Cao Cao, Cao Cao, Cao Pi, Cao Pi, Cao Ren, Cao Ren, Chen Gong, Chen Gong, Chen Pu, Chen Pu, Da Qiao, Da Qiao. 点微, 点微, 
貂蝉，貂蝉，董卓，董卓，朵思，朵思，何皇后，何皇后，法正，法正，甘宁。甘宁，高顺，高顺，公都，公都，公孙瓒，公孙瓒，关羽，关羽，郭嘉，郭嘉。韩遂，韩遂，何进，何进，何曼，何曼，何仪，何仪，黄盖，黄盖，黄绍，黄绍。黄忠，黄忠，黄甫松，黄甫松，纪灵，纪灵，贾诩，贾诩，孔融，孔融，卞夫人，卞。夫人，糜夫人，糜夫人，甄夫人，甄夫人，李傕，李傕，李儒，李儒，刘备，刘备。刘表，刘表，刘宠，刘宠，刘宏，刘宏，刘协，刘协，刘焉，刘焉，刘尧。刘繇，刘璋，刘璋，卢植，卢植，吕布，吕布，马超，马超，马腾，马。腾，孟获，孟获，目录，目录，庞统，庞统，裴元绍，裴元绍，沙漠可。沙漠可，视线，视线，司马爱，司马爱，司马炯，司马炯，司马亮，司马亮，司马伦。司马伦，司马玮，司马玮，司马懿，司马懿，司马颖，司马颖，司马勇，司马勇，司马越。司马越，孙策，孙策
孙策，孙坚，孙坚，孙权，孙权，孙仁，孙仁，太史慈，太史慈，陶谦，陶谦。王朗，王朗，魏延，魏延，文丑，文丑，乌突骨，乌突骨，夏侯惇，夏侯惇，夏侯渊，夏侯渊。小乔，小乔，许褚，许褚，许晃，许晃，徐庶，徐庶，荀攸，荀攸，荀彧，荀彧。颜白虎，颜白虎，颜良，颜良，颜彧，颜彧，于禁，于禁，袁绍，袁绍，袁术，袁术。袁尚，袁尚，袁谭，袁谭，乐进，乐进，张宝，张宝，张飞，张飞，张合，张合。张宏，张宏，张觉，张觉，张角，张角，张凯，张凯，张良，张良，张辽，张辽。张燕，张燕，张昭，张昭，赵云，赵云，郑江，郑江，周泰，周泰，周瑜，周瑜，诸葛亮。诸葛亮，祝融，祝融。So with that, I have pronounced all the characters with unique art in Total War Three Kingdom. Hopefully, the accent markers and the lesson on Pinyin can help you out pronouncing Chinese, or at least understand how Chinese is pronounced and why it's often different from your native language. Because even though you use the same letters. The pronunciation guideline for each of these letters, as in what they should sound like and how different tones work, are applied quite differently. Therefore, applying your language's pronunciation rule to Chinese often end up creating some misunderstandings, and that also will apply vice versa. As many Chinese who are learning foreign languages for the first time often try to apply the same pinyin pronunciations that they have learned since they were young to foreign languages, which often ends up having them. With a certain accent when pronouncing that foreign language, as the pronunciation rules are quite different across different languages. So, with this, we're going to end our episode. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this, and see you guys next time. Bye.